Welcome to a new series of Coonrod's Corner videos, the real world of RF printed circuit boards. Today's topic, selecting high frequency circuit materials based on operating frequency for microwave and millimeter wave applications. Now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, my name is John Coonrod with Rogers Corporation. I am a technical marketing manager, and today I'm going to be discussing how to determine the dielectric constant and the thickness of a laminate based on the frequency need. So the maximum frequency or the range of frequencies needed, bandwidth. And I'll get into a little more detail about how to do that in a relatively simple way. So this is a pretty big topic too, and I am not only going to be able to give you a highlight of it here, but I would invite you to join our Rogers Technology Support Hub, and there you can search on this topic and related subjects and get a lot more information. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm planning on doing is give you a pretty simple method to uh, determine the thickness and dielectric constant of a laminate based on the frequency, maximum frequency, or the range of frequencies, the bandwidth that's needed for your application. Now there's several different ways of going about that, and uh, I'm gonna take kind of a simple method, and then uh, also around that, I'm gonna show you how you can do things in circuit design that will actually uh, give you a little bit more breathing room, you might say, to uh, go beyond the limits and maybe use a laminate that's a little thicker for a higher frequency and different things like that. Shown here is a simple cross-sectional view of a laminate. And it's simply copper top and bottom uh, separated by dielectric. So this is, in RF terms, a uh, open-walled parallel plate waveguide that's loaded with a dielectric. So it's a parallel plate waveguide, and based on that, uh, you can understand several different things about the wave properties, where you, this structure will support a TE wave or a TM wave. However, those properties or those wave propagations are normally not desired. They're usually uh, spurious modes. However, sometimes they are needed on a, a particular design, but it's more common that the TEM wave is desired or quasi-TEM wave. And with that in mind, uh, there's several things to, uh, to think about here. Continuing with the parallel plate waveguide example, uh, there's several things to think about for resonances and unwanted resonances. So between the top copper layer and the bottom copper layer, if the operating frequency is such that you have a half wavelength in that distance, then that's gonna act like a good resonator. <laughs> And that's typically something you don't want. Uh, you want to have no resonance between the planes usually. Uh, there are applications where you do want that, such as an antenna. But most applications you do not want a resonance between these planes because those resonances will interfere with the wave propagation you do want, which is normally TEM wave or quasi-TEM wave. So a half wavelength distance between these copper planes should be avoided and also a quarter wavelength should be avoided because that can also give you a resonance even though it'd be a little weaker maybe than the half wavelength but it still can cause a resonance and can cause a disruption of the wave you want to propagate and even an eighth wavelength uh, can have a very slight influence so the safest number to really use is one tenth wavelength so if the distance between the top copper and the bottom copper at your maximum frequency is one tenth wavelength then you're in a, a range that's pretty good. So I've given a, a table of information here and also an example below. And in the case of uh, looking at Rogers RO4350B materials or RO4835, they have the same electrical uh, properties. The RO4835 laminate is very similar to 4350B, except that it uh, has a little higher uh, robustness to long-term thermal aging. And uh, you can see here at 30 gigahertz uh, that the wavelength is about 0.21 inches and one tenth of that would be 0.021. So the laminate of 0.021 thickness could be used up to 30 gigahertz or less in frequency. Now also uh, you can think about uh, this, the dielectric constant as well. So when you do a wavelength calculation, a simple one for this parallel plate waveguide, you need to know the, the frequency as well as the dielectric constant. So that's included there. The dielectric constant and the frequency will help you understand the proper thickness for the material for the maximum frequency that you're wanting to operate at. Now there's different ways to get this wavelength number. Uh, there's calculators online you can use and also the MWI 2019 software that will also give you uh, wavelength numbers for a laminate of a certain thickness and dielectric constant. 
Once the dielectric constant and the laminate thickness is determined, then you can start looking at other aspects as well. And some of this has to do with uh, things like copper roughness, and the copper roughness is going to be more influential when the copper planes are close together in the case of a thin laminate as compared to thicker laminate where the copper planes are farther apart. So that's one issue, but you can do things uh, that could violate this one-tenth rule with the circuit design. So the one-tenth rule, I should tell you, this is approximate, and in any RF design, it's good to use this one-tenth rule to get you in the ballpark, so to speak, and then you really need to do your RF homework and really make sure that is uh, proper for the design that you're uh, targeting. The picture shown here is a grounded coplanar waveguide, and this is typically used as you go to higher frequencies. When you transition sometimes from microwave frequencies into applications at millimeter wave frequencies, a lot of times the transition is going from a microstrip structure to grounded coplanar waveguide. Now, in the case of microstrip, the one-tenth rule is pretty strong. You really do want to follow that. In the case of grounded coplanar waveguide, the one-tenth rule is a good guideline, but due to the design of the grounded coplanar waveguide, if you make it tightly coupled where the space between the ground signal ground on the coplanar layer is a small space, then you can actually minimize or maybe even eliminate the resonances that could occur between the signal plane and the ground plane due to the thickness, the unwanted resonances. This graphic is uh, basically a, an extension of the last one. The last graphic was about grounded coplanar waveguide and how the coupling of that can minimize or reduce or maybe even eliminate the unwanted resonances. Well, you can do the same thing with strip lines. So if you want to go to a thicker substrate in strip line or grounded coplanar waveguide, thicker substrate usually means lower losses, and that's good. But again, it's the unwanted resonances that you're trying to avoid. And by design, you can do that, as I mentioned in grounded coplanar waveguide, but you can also do that in strip lines shown here where the signal plane, the middle layer, is ground signal ground, so it's a coplanar layer. And if you design that properly, where you have pretty good coupling between the ground signal ground, you can minimize or actually eliminate the resonances between the signal plane and the top and bottom ground planes. However, there is another issue here with strip line, and as you can see, there's a nice rectangular looking waveguide underneath the signal plane and to the ground plane below and also above. So this can act as a waveguide, and a lot of times these waveguide modes, or most times, these are unwanted for a strip line structure, and uh, that's another thing to be concerned with. So one is the coupling of the grounded coplanar uh, signal layer itself, and the other is uh, keeping in mind the geometry uh, from the signal plane to the ground planes for a waveguide mode and making sure you do not have a waveguide mode in the, op the frequency of operation. In summary, uh, there's a simple way of actually looking at uh, determining the, the proper thickness and dielectric constant of a laminate just by the unwanted resonances, and I've shown how to do that here. It's pretty easy, actually, and uh, you can figure out the wavelength uh, online. There's calculators, MWI 2019. That's got the, uh, the capability to also give you the wavelength. And then once you have that, uh, you usually do not want to violate that one-tenth uh, rule, one-tenth wavelength thickness between the top copper and the bottom copper. In the case of microstrip, that's true. In the case of grounded coplanar waveguide or even strip line that has a grounded uh, coplanar structure on the signal plane, you could actually violate the one-tenth rule there if you uh, need to. And in doing so, you're going to have to be uh, a little more cautious about how you're doing the coupling with the coplanar structure. But it can be done. This concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you're not already a member, join the Rogers Technical Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more Rogers Corporation informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Rog mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.